Hi, my name is Emily. I work as a licensed social worker at Spring Hill Senior Residence. Spring Hill Senior Residence is a skilled nursing facility in which we have both short-term rehab residents that come in for therapy and then discharge home, and also long-term care residents that live here. So this is their home. Um, as their social worker, um, my primary objective with them is to do discharge planning for the residents that go home and just make sure they have safe, effective discharge planning. And on the long-term care residents, the people that live here, my main responsibility with them is to be an advocate for them. And as far as discharge planning goes, um, as their social worker, it's my responsibility to make sure that they have safe, effective discharge plans. And what that means is that they have home health set up and that would be a nurse and a physical therapist or an occupational therapist that would follow that patient at home and evaluate the patient in the home. So I set that up so that follows the patient when they get home from the skilled nursing facility. I also set up any durable medical equipment that they might need. Let's say for example, a lady came in and she broke her hip. So she came to us and had physical therapy and now she's been here a while and she's ready to go home. Or well, she may need like a rolling walker or a wheelchair or a shower chair to put in the shower um, so she doesn't have any fall risks after she gets home. So I would order that for them. I would also be in touch with their primary care physician um, to set up a follow-up appointment for the patient after they leave this skilled nursing facility. As far as the long-term care residents are concerned, my job with them is to perform what's called a behavioral interview for mental status. And that's where I just go in and assess their cognitive abilities, like their ability to recall what year it is, the month and the day of the week, and remember certain words that I ask them and to recall them a short time later. I also um, watch their watch for symptoms of depression and if they have anything like that or if they're having any kind of behavioral um, instances then I would get an order from the doctor to do a psychiatric evaluation for them and I also track their psychotropic medications that they may be, may be on such as any antidepressant, psychotropic, anti-anxiety or hypnotic medications um, we track those all throughout the facility so we can keep a good count on how many residents we have on psychotropic medications. Because we don't like to see that number real high. We do like to keep it low and we'd like to taper that patient off of those medications if we can. And also um, I like to make sure that the patient's rights are protected while they're here. You know, they have a right to privacy a right to be treated with dignity and respect because this is their home. So it's my job to make sure that those rights are protected. As a social worker in a long-term care facility, um, my working hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. And the stress level really varies as to what's going on that day um, on a range of 1 to 10. You know, it can be anywhere from a 4 to an 8. The requirements to work as a social worker um, first would be to get a bachelor's degree in social work and then depending on what state in which you live um, you may or may not be able to be licensed um, in social work um, for example the state i live in i have a bachelor's degree in social work and i am a licensed social worker and what that entails is after you get your degree is you take a test with the state in which you live and you're licensed for that position. And then you also, some states require you to have supervision for two years while other states um, don't require that. And some states even um, a bachelor's degree 
is not sufficient to be licensed in social work. You have to go on and have a master's degree in order to be licensed in social work. So there's, you may want to check with the state in which you live. Um, each state has their own rules and regulations as to who can and who cannot be licensed in social work. In this particular setting with social work um, in a skilled nursing facility, um, there's a lot going on. You have many different people that come in and out and so it's important that you have the characteristics um, of being patient with people and also being able to empathize with people and what they're going through. Because um, for most people, this is their first time in a facility like this. You know, they've had to put a granny in a long-term care facility and they don't know how to handle it. So that requires a lot of patience and understanding because um, there's a lot going on um, during the time frame of an eight hour work day. The best part of being a social worker in a skilled nursing facility um, is the people that I work with, the population, the geriatric population. Um, I love working with older people. Um, so if that's not something that <clears throat> you think that you would enjoy, you know, you may want to think about going into a different form of social work. There's many other variations of social work out there. So that would be my favorite part. Um, also, there's a combination of my best and worst parts, and that would be that something is going on constantly all day. Um, the environment here is just one thing after the other, and I really enjoy that, um, but it is a kind of high stress level, so that's something to think about. Um, that's one of the best and worst parts kind of together. Um, another worst part about working in a skilled nursing facility would be families with their loved ones. Um, let's say they put granny here for rehab and granny, they have unrealistic expectations um, for granny. Um, granny has a diagnosis of dementia and granny is bed bound and she realistically is never going to be able to walk again. Um, and the family thinks that the more rehab she gets, that she'll be able to get up and walk again and, and come back to the person that she used to be. So dementia is a, is a horrible, horrible illness. And I can definitely understand why families feel that way. Um, but some families do have unrealis unrealistic expectations as far as the recovery of their loved one. So that's the worst part of the job. Okay, so some final advice on um, going for a future with social work. Um, you need to be able to communicate well with other people. That's probably one of the most important things about a social work position is to be able to communicate effectively with others. Um, a way you can enhance this job skill is to go for a part-time job that would promote this ability. Um, not just a job that would um, be just handing somebody back change. Uh, maybe a job um, as a receptionist where you're engaging with others. Um, that would be a good example of where you could learn how to communicate effectively with the public. Um, another thing you would like to, uh, to go ahead and decide what area of social work you want to go into and there's several different areas you could go into mental health with a social work degree you could go into geriatrics like I did with a social work degree or you could go um, into working with children um, there's many others out there as well um, and this is something usually happens in your senior year of college you have a choice as to where you want to do your internship um, I did my internship at a mental health facility and that actually helped me decide that I did not like mental health, um, that I wanted to go a different route. So that was very beneficial for me um, and it helped me decide on what I wanted my future career to be.